Good afternoon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the lunch and the previous two lectures. I did. Uh, so we move back to the uh, intubated patient, uh, uh, speaking about uh, quasi-static pressure volume loops. Uh, this is something that you get uh, performing a low flow inflation and deflation maneuver in, uh, in your patient. Uh, the inspiratory and the expiratory limbs are not superimposed. That means that there is some hysteresis, so the area enclosed in, uh, in the loop is not zero. And this is physiology. No? This is because there is uh, the gas exchange ex effect, some stress ad adaptation uh, due to viscoelastic properties. But if you see a large increase of this hysteresis of the area, area in, enclosed in, uh, in, the, in the loop, uh, we are moving to pathology probably because this is due to uh, recruitment and de-recruitment occurring during your, your maneuver. Why? Because we perfectly know <coughs> from the old study from the Gattinoni group that uh, in the lung, the opening and the closing pressure are different. There is a gap, almost 10 up to 15 centimeters of water. That means that uh, the alveoli that are open, for instance, at 25 centimeters of, of water during the inflation uh, are still open during the deflation, in the deflation limb, uh, when the pressure is uh, as low as 10 centimeters of water. So this is the reason why, for the same pressure, we have a higher volume in the deflation limb of this curve. And this is also the, the reason why the area of hysteresis is correlated with the amount of lung tissue that is recruitable in, uh, in our patient. This was very well uh, demonstrated and validated against the quantitative, quantitative CT that is the uh, gold standard for this, uh, this assessment. So the larger the hysteresis, the larger the loop, the um, um, greater the potential for lung recruitment in, in our patient. And uh, this author suggested uh, a threshold. So above this threshold, the simpler is probably the max distance uh, to be applied at, at the bedside. So when you detect in your patient a max di distance that is larger than 41% of the max volume that is generated during the maneuver, that one is a, a patient with a, a high potential for lung recruitment. Is this useful to, to know at the bedside, no? to split our patient in a high and low recruitability uh, condition? For sure, yes, because it seems that our patients appreciate that we set PEEP according to recruitability. When we do not, is a problem, because if we set low PEEP in high recruitable patient or uh, high PEEP in low recruitable, actually uh, the outcome is very poor. So yes, the answer to this question is, uh, to me, yes. Uh, especially at the very be beginning, uh, after intubation, just to, you know, to split your, your patient into high or low recruitable patient. And to grossly orientate your strategy, high versus low PEEP strategy. But then, I think that we can move to trying to move on trying to personalize as much as possible the setting of PEEP in our patient, uh, doing a fine tuning uh, of PEEP. One idea could be to consider the fact that recruitability is not uh, 
black or white in, in our patient. No? We, we, <coughs> we, we, we have, uh, in the end, a continuous parameter that is Langistevesis. So we can imagine to uh, set PIP according to this continuous parameter. The higher the recruitability, the higher the PIP. Could be a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not. Why? Massimo Cressoni, again from the <coughs> Milano group, uh, analyzed the relationship between the amount of lung tissue that is recruitable and the superimposed pressure. That means the pressure that you have to apply, we have to apply, to avoid expiratory derecruitment and opening and closing. And the result was disappointing for our idea because it seems there is almost no correlation between the size of the recruitable lung and the PIP level that we need to, see, to set to keep this lung tissue open. No correlation at all. So we, we need the two information. How much is the recruitable lung and how much pressure we need to take this <coughs> lung open. Another option is to test different level of PIP during a, a, de a, a decremental PIP, uh, PIP trial and selecting the PIP value according to respiratory mechanics, usually according to, to the best compliance. Why? Because this level of PIP seems to be, be associated with the best uh, uh, combination of uh, overdistension and derecruitment. So again, very good idea. We know that uh, a large trial failed to um, demonstrate a clinical advantage with such uh, a strategy. Several explanations for, for this finding were uh, proposed and, and, and discussed. Uh, I have one that sometimes uh, the uh, interpretation of this trial, of the decremental PIP trial, can be a little bit complicated by tidal recruitment, opening and closing. In fact, when you perform a PIP step down, you decrease PIP, if you see a, a decrease of compliance, this is easy to be interpreted as a lung derecruitment. Whereas, if you see an increase of compliance, this can be due to a decreased lung overdistension that is a favorable mechanical effect of this uh, PIP step down, or to tidal recruitment that we don't like that much. So, and we know, no, this is because the uh, snap opening of uh, uh, collapsed alveoli generates usually larger volume, and so we measure a, 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 a higher compliance, than <coughs> what happens when we set PIP, uh, that is a, a PIP level that is able to stabilize the, the alveoli. So how we, we can detect this problem and improve the uh, uh, decremental PIP trial interpretation. A suggestion comes from some experimental finding, like uh, uh, this from Peter Riemensberger, uh, who uh, performed a decremental PIP trial in uh, an experimental lung injury model, uh, decreasing PIP by five centimeters of water steps and observing a progressive increase of lung of respiratory system compliance, that is the slope of the volume pressure uh, curve. But this improvement of compliance was associated actually to a progressive and exponential increase of tidal hysteresis. Why tidal hysteresis? Because it's Hysteresis related to a tidal pressure volume loop performed from PIP value uh, to 
plateau pressure and, and back to PIP. So, this could be the instrument no, uh, to detect at the bedside, also in patient, tidal recruitment. And this is a respiratory physiology. Uh, from a, let's say, physics point of view, tidal hysteresis is actually the amount of unrecovered energy. That means the amount of energy that is dissipated in the lung tissue each breath. So, same, a single tool we can use two different ways. A full pressure volume curve when we want to test the lung recruitability in our patient, or a tidal pressure volume curve from PIP to plateau and back if uh, we want to, to assess the unrecovered energy. I like this concept. And if the question is, is my PIP setting able to avoid opening and closing? No? This is the task for, for PIP, actually. So we decided to, to perform a study on, in a ARDS patient uh, and to test this combined approach. So in, in order to be able to identify the two unfavorable unfa mechanical effects of a PIP step down. Uh, land de-recruitment is one we can detect as a compliance decrease, and opening and closing or tidal recruitment is the other one, and we can detect as a large increase in tidal hysteresis. So after a, a brief recruitment maneuver, we perform a decremental PIP trial, starting um, with a, a, a high PIP that was six centimeters of water higher than the clinical PIP, the baseline PIP, uh, while maintaining a constant the plateau pressure. And then <laughs> PIP was decreased by two centimeters of water steps down to a minimum value that was uh, <coughs> clinical PIP minus six centimeters of water. At the end of each, of each step, we perform the low flow inflation deflation maneuver, but not the full the tidal maneuver, so from PIP to, to plateau and, and back. And then we measure the lung hysteresis, the tidal hysteresis, as the area enclosed in the pressure volume loop normalized on the driving pressure because we, we try to compare uh, this parameter uh, uh, among different steps of the, of the dec decremental PIP trial. We found different patterns, this is one, uh, this patient uh, had a clinical PIP of 12 centimeters of water, so we increased PIP up to 18, and then during the trial we decreased down to 6 centimeters of water. This is the tidal pressure volume loop, loop performed from 18 up to almost 30 centimeters of water. You see there is a small hysteresis, seems uh, uh, almost physiologic. But then, as soon as we decrease PIP, we saw a progressive and exponential increase of tidal hysteresis. So, the highest PIP that, that was tested was the only level able to avoid tidal recruitment in this patient. Here on the, on the right, <coughs> you see uh, open circles are, are the uh, compliance that was measured at, at each step, and open square is tidal hysteresis. So you see that in this particular patient that we called high tidal recruiter, uh, the combined approach actually changed a lot the interpretation of the trial. Because in this case, uh, the combined approach suggested to stay on hating of PEEP because was the level of PEEP able to avoid tidal recruitment, whereas uh, the, if you look only at compliance, probably you are moving to very lower values, like 8 centimeters of water, 
because this level of PIP was as associated with the best compliance. But again, the best compliance was associated with a very large amount of tidal recruitment. This is a completely different patient. So the clinical PIP was 10, so we study uh, PIP levels between 16 and, and, and 4. And you see in this patient, uh, moving down with PIP, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, nothing is happening. The hysteresis is very small at each step, and all the loops are almost superimposed. So in this case, the two approaches were uh, equal, no? They suggested the same value, very low. It's the best PIP is in, in this patient was probably four centimeters of water because it was enough to avoid tidal recruitment. And then we, <coughs> we have a third, the last uh, pattern, last but not, not least, because actually this was the uh, uh, relative majority uh, of, of the patient. So this patient uh, had the clinical PIP of 12, so we studied a range of PIP between 18 and 6, and you see moving from 18 to 16 to 14 to 12, again, nothing happened. But as soon as we decrease PIP below this level, boom, a fast uh, exponential increase of tidal hysteresis was observed. So we call this patient the biphasic, biphasic pattern or biphasic tidal uh, recruitment. In this case, the physician was right, no? The PIP set by the physician was told that was the last value, the lowest value of PIP able to avoid tidal recruitment. So, in the end, we observe three different patterns, the high and the low tidal recruital and the biphasic one, but uh, only two rates of change of tidal hysteresis when uh, PIP was step by step decreased. So, we observed a high rate, a fast increase of tidal hysteresis in red in all tidal recruiter and in the fast phase of biphasic patient, and a very slow, a completely different value uh, with uh, uh, a slow rate in low tidal recruiter and in the low, slow phase of biphasic, biphasic pattern. This is consistent with experimental data. Uh, you see on the right, in this experimental model of high and low recruitability condition, when they increased the tidal volume and the driving pressure, they observed a slow increase of tidal hysteresis in green when the re recruitability was low, and a very fast exponential increase of tidal hysteresis when the condition was of high tidal recruitability. But what is, to me, even more interesting is that it seems that there is a sort of threshold. So this is the, <coughs> no? You see that almost all the values that we recorded in high tidal recruiters were above this line. 100 ml of normalized uh, tidal hysteresis. Almost all the values that we recorded in low tidal recruiters were below this line. And the point where we observed the change, the sudden change in the slope in the biphasic pattern was close to this value. Okay? In a post hoc analysis, we found <coughs> that a value of tidal hysteresis of 100 ml or higher was uh, very uh, good in predicting, sorry, in predicting tidal recruitment at the next PIP step down. What about the PIP selection? Here you see in green the clinical setting. Okay. 
uh, in orange, the best compliant approach, and in, in, in blue, the combined approach. The best compliant approach in this patient, they were all COVID-19 related ARDS, always uh, suggest to decrease PEEP, irrespective of the mechanical pattern, let's say, whereas the combined approach suggested to increase PEEP in a high tidal recruiter, and to decrease PEEP in low tidal recruiter. And this was associated with the capability of PEEP in limiting tidal recruitment and, again, the energy dissipated in the uh, uh, lung tissue uh, at each breath. So to conclude, uh, we have a single tool, but we can use differently. The full pressure volume curve can be used to assess the potential for lung recruitment. I, I think this is very useful uh, um, early after intubation. Uh, we describe the use of tidal pressure volume loop to measure tidal hysteresis in order to be able to detect tidal recruitment and assess unrecovered energy. Uh, and the use of multiple tidal pressure volume loop in the context of the and the uh, decremental PEEP trial to personalize as much as possible PEEP in our patient. Whether our patient will appreciate uh, a PEEP setting uh, to, to, to have the best combination of hyperinflation, de-recruitment, and trauma will say probably in the next future. <laughs> We don't know. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Francesco. So two, two questions. First is that um, why do you have, uh, why did you keep the plateau pressure constant uh, when calculating the hysteresis and not going down progressively as like together with the PEEP? This is one f first question. And then my next question is, have you, have you thought about using this approach and comparing with CT? Okay. Uh, the reason for uh, keeping a, a constant plateau uh, is tribal. First of all, um, in the past there was a, a technical uh, limitation in the ventilator, so it was not, not possible to set as the highest pressure in the loop uh, a value below 25. Okay. So this limited the opportunity to, to mm -hmm. take a constant driving pressure. Okay. Uh, the, uh, to correct for this, you divide by delta P, so yeah. you are trying to normalize, yeah. but I'm not sure that yeah. the normalization is perfect. But on, the other, uh, on the other hand, this was uh, a way to simplify the equation. Because uh, uh, if you perform, a, uh, you are, we are really testing PIP. Because uh, uh, you are applying always the same opening pressure, the same pressure that opens the lung, the lung tissue. So you can assume that in each step, the lung tissue that was open at an inspiration was the same, and actually, it was all, almost like that when we you know, uh, uh, check this. So you are testing really you know, your PIP setting if that value is able to keep open okay. the same length tissue. This, this was, let's say, a collateral effect of the, of, okay. of the technical limitation. Then uh, I know that the conventional uh, decremental PIP trial is performed with a constant tidal volume or a constant driving pressure. It makes sense. But uh, why not a, a variable uh, setting? I mean, if you start from very high level of PIP, no, no, if no. you want to overcome the threshold, yeah. no? I, I, I'm just asking this question because it is well known that hysteresis depends on tidal volume. The larger the tidal volume, the larger is going to be the hysteresis. So, yeah. But then you normalize by driving pressure, 
it's a way to correct. But yeah. uh, anyway, uh, this. But uh, any any hints if uh, the, the correlation with CT is is going to be good? Uh, so when you start to have hysteresis, you really see something on the CT. We have to check this. I think it's. Uh, um, it's, a, it's an important point, maybe with CT or uh, even easier with, uh, with EIT. Yeah, EIT, yeah. yeah. This is going to be the next yeah. step. I would, I would love to see those results. We have one minute for one last question, so anyone would like to ask something? We are safe. We are set? Okay, so everyone was very clear. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you do, any additional comments? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, I hope to see you in next sessions.